It's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly when baseball started, but the earliest mention of the sport date back to 1344, when this French manuscript depicts clerics playing a game that's like a distant cousin to our beloved baseball. But it wasn't just the French getting in on the action. Our buddies in Great Britain and Ireland had their own version called Rounders, which was like their British twist on baseball. Fast forward to 1744 and we stumble upon a gem. It's a British children's publication called A Little Pretty Pocket Book by John Newberry and it drops the first ever recorded mention of baseball. They even called it baseball. The book had a rhyme description and a woodcut that kind of resembled our modern game, except the field was all triangular instead of diamond shaped and they used posts instead of traditional bases. A few years passed and the sport just kept growing in popularity. In fact, in 1749, the stars aligned in Surrey as the Prince of Wales himself stepped up to the plate for the first recorded game of baseball. And across the pond in good old America, we weren't about to be left out of the fun. In 1791, the town of Pittsfield, Massachusetts was all like, nah, no baseball near our fancy meeting house, folks. They had to pass a bylaw just to put a stop to it. But you know what they say, you can't keep baseball down. By 1796, the game had made its mark and even got a shout out in a German scholar's book on popular pastimes. They called it English Baseball and described a contest between two teams with the batter getting three swings at the ball from the home plate. And you know what? Just one out was enough to retire a whole side. It was a simpler time, my friends. Fast forward to the early 1830s and there's a whole bunch of bat and ball games popping up all over North America that we could totally recognize as early forms of baseball. They had different names depending on the local scene, like town ball, round ball, or baseball. But let me tell you about a game that went down in Beachville, Ontario in 1838. This game had some similarities to what we know as modern baseball, but there were some quirky twists. They had five bases or buys, and the first buy was only 18 feet from the home buy. And get this, if a hit ball was caught after the first bounce, the batter was out. Talk about some unique rules. Fast forward to 1845, Alexander Cartwright from the New York City's Knickerbocker Club laid down a set of rules known as the Knickerbocker Rules. These rules banned the practice of soaking or plugging, which basically meant hitting a runner with a thrown ball to get him out. They also introduced a smaller and harder ball, making things a bit more intense. Some other rules were getting pretty close to what we now consider modern baseball. But hey, catching a ball on the first bounce was still an out, and only underhand pitching was allowed. The first officially recorded baseball game in U.S. history went down on June 19, 1846 in Hoboken, New Jersey. It was a showdown between the New York Nine and the Knickerbockers. And let's just say the New York Nine totally dominated, winning 23-1 in just four innings. During the early 1900s, baseball faced various challenges but also experienced significant developments. In 1903, the National Agreement was established, formalizing relations between the two major leagues, National League and American League, and the National Association of Professional Baseball Leagues, representing most minor professional leagues. The National Baseball Commission was created to oversee organized baseball, and that fall, the World Series was inaugurated, and the Boston Americans, later known as the Red Sox of the American League, defeating the Pittsburgh Pirates of the National League. However, in the following year, the World Series wasn't held because the National League champion New York Giants, led by manager John McGraw, refused to recognize the Major League status of the American League and its champion. It was only 1905, when the Giants were National League champions again, that the series was established as the Major League's annual championship event. As professional baseball became more profitable, players began raising grievances against owners regarding control and fair income distribution. Players occasionally attempted strikes during this time, but they often failed due to the strict rules of baseball contracts and the reserve clause, which bound players to their teams even after their contracts ended. One of the darkest chapters in baseball history occurred in 1919 with the Black Sox scandal. Members of the Chicago White Sox conspired to throw the World Series from financial gain, leading to the dissolution of the National Baseball Commission and the appointment of the first commissioner of baseball, Kennesaw Mountain Landis, in 1920. In the early 20th century, baseball was a lower scoring game and pitchers like Walter Johnson and Christy Mathewson dominated. The inside game was played aggressively, emphasizing scratching for runs. However, rule changes and circumstances in the 1920s favored hitters, including regulations governing the ball's size, shape, and composition, and the banning of pitches dependent on treating or roughing up the ball. The rise of legendary player Babe Ruth, who set numerous slugging records with the New York Yankees, permanently altered the nature of the game. The Yankees gained a reputation as the premier team in the majors. Branch Rickey, general manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, developed the first modern farm system in the late 1920s and early 1930s, investing in minor league clubs. In 1933, the Negro National League was formed, followed by the Eastern Colored League and later the Negro American League. 
The first elections to the National Baseball Hall of Fame took place in 1936, and Little League Baseball was founded in 1939, becoming an important organizing body for children's baseball leagues. World War II affected professional baseball as many players left to serve in the armed forces. To maintain the game's popularity, the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League was formed in 1943 and existed until 1954. In 1947, Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier signing with the Brooklyn Dodgers and becoming the first African-American to play in the major leagues. Latin American players also began entering the majors in greater numbers. Baseball attendance declined in the face of competition from television and football. While the majors rebounded by the mid-1950s, the minor leagues suffered and hundreds of semi-pro and amateur teams disbanded. The integration of African-American players into the majors occurred slowly, with only six of the 16 major league teams having black players on their rosters by 1953. The Major League Baseball Players Association was founded in that year, but remained largely effective initially. The Boston Red Sox, the last all-white Major League team, added a black player in 1959. Expansion occurred in 1961 when the American League added the Los Angeles Angels and extended the season to 162 games. This expansion coincided with Roger Maris breaking Babe Ruth's single-season home run record, becoming one of the most celebrated records in baseball history. In total, four new franchises were launched during 1961-62 marking the first major league expansion in 60 years and bringing the total number of teams in each league to 10. The players' union got some serious guts thanks to Marvin Miller, a total legend who took charge in 1966. Picture a David vs. Goliath showdown, but instead of slingshots, they used negotiations. Pitchers were becoming wild beasts on the field, so to restore some balance, they shrunk the strike zone and brought down the pitcher's mound. It was like trying to tame a wild stallion, but hey, they had to try. Then came the grand expansion of 1969. Two new teams joined the National and American League, and they divided them into two divisions each. But wait, there's more. They introduced the League Championship Series, the ultimate battle royale to decide who gets to the World Series. That same year, Kurt Flood from the St. Louis Cardinals made a legal move and challenged the reserve clause. The first player strike in 72 also caused some chaos, delaying the season by two whole weeks. They needed more offense, so the American League said, heck yeah, and brought in the designated hitter rule in 73. Boom! In 75, everything changed when they struck down a reserve clause. The players' union power skyrocketed, and so did those fat stacks of cash for the players. The 77 expansion added two more teams to the American League, and then we hit a rough patch. Strikes in 81 and 94 made fans lose their minds. Imagine canceling the World Series after 90 frickin' years. Attendance was off the charts before that mess, but luckily, they bounced back. Fast forward to the 90s, and they added three more expansion teams. That meant another makeover for the major leagues. Three divisions each, baby. Home runs were flying like crazy, especially in 93 and 94. After the 94 season got cut short, they made a comeback in 95 and added the wildcard team to the playoffs. It was like giving the underdogs a fighting chance. Then they threw an interleague play in 97, and the stadiums were packed. Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa decided to shatter Maris's home run in 98, and the fans went nuts. More expansion teams followed suit, making the late 90s a wild ride. In 2000, they dissolved the National and American Leagues as separate entities and formed Major League Baseball, or MLB. It was like a superhero team-up, combining powers and getting all organized. But hey, there were some not-so-pretty secrets. The whole steroid scandal erupted, and players like Bonds, McGuire, and Sosa were in the spotlight. Suspicion grew, but it wasn't until 2004 that they finally cracked down on those performance-enhancing drugs. Oh, the drama. In 2007, Barry Bonds stole the crown and became the all-time home run leader. Total legend status. Attendance soared for major and minor leagues, even though Little League numbers were sliding down the hill. Blame it on tougher drug testing, or maybe the kiddos just wanted to play Fortnite instead. Then, in 2010, everything flipped. It was the year of the pitcher, where runs per game hit rock bottom and strikeouts were on the rise. It was like the pitchers decided to turn the tables and show the sluggers who's boss. Before the 2012 season, they threw us a curveball and let two wildcard teams join the playoff party. One game playoffs between the wildcards became a tradition. That brings us to today. In 2022, they cranked it up to three wildcard teams per league. Wildcard series, baby. Playoffs got even wilder. They also slapped a designated hitter on every team, ushering in the era of pure hitting power.